I care with page 13 of First Son and Sword. Okay, so um, this page uh, could have gone a lot faster, I think, but um, it, it's funny, as I watched myself drawing it, as I pieced this video together, I realized how much I erased and redrew, not because I did anything wrong, but um, because I was, it's almost like writing, where you, you're starting to type and you're thinking through the scene, you're like, oh wait, I would rather see this, oh, this fits better. And it was like that, where I was uh, changing details and parts of the world because I was, my view of the world was developing as I drew the page. Um, and I feel good about that. Uh, I, I do think it resulted in taking longer and being more tedious than it needed to be. But at the same time, it was not because I wasn't in the flow or because my drawing skills were lacking or whatever. Um, it's because I was thinking and, and uh, kind of processing the world on the page. And that's okay. I can live with that. Um, yeah, at this point, you won't be able to see me doing that. Um, but you'll see everything's coming from that one point perspective. I, I'm building it out. Um, starting with the, the more difficult or important parts. So they're important to get right, which uh, for this, it's where the figures are going to be. Uh, they're coming off of the walkway onto a, a boat on a canal, and it's like two canoes that are uh, connect connected side by side. And uh, so I've got to get, uh, get that right. And I knew that I'm going to, um, you know, this is kind of a nice trick. Uh, when you have more than one character, uh, you can you can show a series of movements in one panel, because um, uh, the the like if they're walking in a line, the person behind the the person in the front, uh, you know that that's where the person in the front was a moment ago. Um, I think this came up a lot in a. Uh, Seven Dwarfs, it's a graphic novel I did that was uh, a different take on uh, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, and uh, having seven dwarves to draw all the time, um, like doing fighting scenes and stuff, um, there was a way to indicate like that animation of like one thing to the next by just showing multiple figures uh, at different stages in that, in that motion or whatever. So... Um, yeah, that's what I'm doing here where uh, Sword is standing at the boat. He's paying and talking to get on it. And Sun is running down the stairs, catching up with him. <clears throat> so I started there with the figure. There's, uh, there's these guys that uh, ride on the boat. Um, you know, they're, they're just like workers that, that transport people for pay. Um, but it was my idea for kind of the, the whole town. Uh, so you can imagine Venice with the canals. It's, you know, something related to that in a way. But um, they, they wear these big wooden uh, donuts around their neck. And the idea is that uh, they have to do this so that the crocodiles won't uh, eat them. That they happen to go overboard or get attacked. The crocodiles don't really, really want them, or, or somehow they can get away. Uh, I'm not going to explain that in uh, in the comic, but it was my idea of like you would see this and think, why do these people have this big goofy wood block around their uh, neck? Um, just a funny element, um, world building. Yeah, and I kind of moved on to the next panel. Um, kind of need a three-quarter view or a back view on this character here. Um, I started to draw a sword, um, but realized I wanted to fit sun in. Like, uh, I like that. It's something I've shown a few times, or, or at least once so far in this, uh, in this scene, this comic. Um, son being that smaller child following the, the father figure and like kind of looking, looking over around him to see what he's doing with the other adults. Um, so, so squeezing him in there, that's why I repositioned a uh, sword. So that's, that's just figuring it out on the page. 
I knew I wanted some background in there. Uh, I didn't just want to leave like a blank space there. Um, and, and I know, you know, I had a choice of like, how are they standing? What's behind them? Um, and I went with, uh, across the canal with that. There's like a doorway and a little bit of stairs and a little walkway there. And I just threw that in as the background. So like you can kind of choose how these people have like rotated in space. Um, I needed to keep sword on the left. Um, and, and the, the oarsmen on the right, um, cause that's how they're positioned in the last panel. So it makes sense to people but you have a little leeway about like exactly what background do you want to show? So I chose a, a really easy one. Uh, it's kind of a flat wall, a little angle on it. I was thinking about this. Um, so this is a, this is a camera angle. Um, well, like it's a, it's an angle and with the sun with where shadows are going to fall that, that I chose, um, that makes it harder to, to cast a shadow on, on these buildings. Um, so I was playing with here, uh, what, what texture I would want to apply to the buildings. Um, do I want to apply, uh, large stones? Are they going to be like perfectly cut blocks or more roughly cut with different sizes and shapes? Um, and, and I was thinking that, um, you know, there's these layers to this city where some things are newer and some are older. So the bigger, uh, rougher stones seemed more more right for for this part um, and then I actually go back and change that later as I'm rethinking uh, what I want it to look like I tend to go with looser uh, like or rougher and different shaped stonework because I'd, it's just easier than uh, trying to map out uh, specifically When it comes to bricks, though, it's you should look at actual brickwork. My dad's a brick mason, so that kind of helps me. But, um, or well, he used to be a brick mason. But uh, you, uh, you know, when you look at actual brickwork and you see how it's uh, how they fit together and like the gaps between them and uh, the way like windows windows and doors are framed and things, uh, you get. You get some knowledge that uh, that helps your things look more real. Yeah, so I opted for uh, a more uniform block and clean lined block. So the reason for that was partly that the stonework on the f the the floor of the walkway that sword is standing on is like a looser, rougher stone, and I didn't want I wanted to kind of separate those uh, those patterns, those textures so that it was it was more clearly wall versus ground um and i repeated it on the other side of the canal uh to unify unify that um so that, that was something i i changed I, I think i changed the the roof too i was going to go with these like those curved clay uh tiles and later i change it to just boards Yeah, here the uh, sun is just barely squeezed in between the two figures. And I've got him kind of leaning a bit, so there's that acting. I don't want him just uh, standing straight up, looking like he's not doing anything. He's kind of leaning around to get a better look at what the adults are doing. Uh, so I wanted to imply that a bit. Um, and uh, But just a very small space to squeeze him in, and it was enough. Um, and this is the first time I think we've seen into his coat a bit to see that he has uh, at least his like short sword is is in its regular position. He's been hiding it, but it's there. Uh, he has his sword on him, too, I believe. Um, but he's just been very uh, clever with how he uh, positions that on his person where you can't see it. Here you can kind of see uh, sword also in comparison to like an average person. So, um, you know, if he's a six foot, 200 pound guy, uh, or more, uh, in, in this time period when the average height of a man might've been like five, three and 130 pounds, like if you think about their diet and whatnot, 
um, he would be a beast. Uh, so, um, I, that's something I want to have in mind is, is to show that, uh, a little more small forms, uh, for, for adult people than we typically see in, in things. Also the same thing with his sword, like he's, uh, he's the only one with a long sword. So, uh, maybe everyone uses iron and he uses steel, uh, uh, something he procured in some, you know, different place, but, uh, very rare or something. Right. So, um, so most people have a shorter sword, think like Rome, uh, and, um, uh, and that's something that'll be fun to play with. I mean, they still have pole arms and different things, but, um, he'll have an advantage and, and a different way of fighting since he has this long sword. And that's why they call him sword too. It's like for his sword and his reputation. the end of this video I'd like to show you the finished page with the dialogue um, that's something I hadn't been doing because I made the videos at a different time like than when the the page was actually finished but all of these pages can be read on the webcomic site uh, you can get to it from ikecomics.com um, the direct site is a little longer uh, line but the links in the description as well so you can read them there, but this time, uh, maybe every time or sometimes, uh, when the finished page, the colors and letters are done, I'd like to go ahead and show that at the end of the video so that you get even more out of this video. You get that comparison of like the page that's drawn and then like where I put the uh, word balloons and like what the dialogue was that goes with this acting and stuff I'm doing. Here I've got um, a pretty sharp perspective on uh, the canoes that are, uh, you know, in tandem connected there. Um, I actually struggled with this quite a bit, um, not because of the shape of a canoe in perspective. Uh, I kind of just did that loosely and it, I felt like it worked out fine. Um, but, uh, placing shadows was a little bit of a challenge. Um, but, but the hardest thing was, um, I kept forgetting where people were, were positioned on the boat. So it's got three benches the two on the end are uh, connecting the two boats together, so they go all the way across. And then the two, the the seats in the middle, are are just on that boat alone. They're they're not going across the water. Um, but uh, I kept forgetting, like, yeah, exactly which bench people were seated on and where the workers were standing. I had to keep going back and referencing that, and I think I had to erase and redraw, like in this next panel coming up. I had to erase and redraw. Uh, the, the, uh, the workers there. Cause it was like, uh, they were, they were not in the right spot. Um, so, um, you know, that's something I could have addressed with the design, like by, by, um, when I drew the, them in the boat the first time, I just kind of went with what felt natural, but then I have to keep redrawing them in the boat in the same position and from different angles. And so, um, when you think about the design, could this boat have had two benches? Uh, could the workers have been like equally positioned uh, instead of slightly differently positioned on, on each end of the boat? Because um, then that would have just been a lot easier to draw uh, from all the different angles. Uh, you know, that's always in the back of my mind. And um, you just can't, for me, there's a balance. I can't be perfect with, uh, with getting the really simple layout uh, of, of those things um, because I am making it up on the page to a degree and that's something I want to keep doing. Yeah, you'll see here I'm figuring out. So, um, so here uh, the boat is actually moving uh, towards the camera, like uh, swords back is to the direction they're going and sun's facing the right way. Um, so with, you know, with the shadows here, I, uh, if you were to, if you were to do all this with color, you would use some value to, and, and, and maybe color to, to indicate, um, the, that sword is in, his cloak there, his back is in the foreground and it's really like, um, not the focus that sun is the, is the focal point 
and sword is framing him in a way. And so you can put him in shadow, uh, with inks, or you can do it with color or however you want to do it to, to differentiate them. Um, and you, you, you could also just leave him like, uh, white and with no detail. I mean, that would be a way to frame it as well. I don't typically do that. Um, so regardless of where the light should be hitting him, uh, you know, I, I, I get to play with that when it comes to, uh, could a building be in the way that like puts him in shadow? Um, or did they just turn a corner, uh, where the sun's in a different position to them? Uh, it also helps if the sun's not in a really position. So if you put your light like really low on the horizon, then, um, it's like, it's such a harsh angle that like, uh, it's, it's pretty much, you know, it's harder to fake that changing. Um, but if it's, you know, if it's at 12 or one o'clock, that shadow kind of like moves <laughs> with them, uh, closer to the, to the figure and, and you could see more variation in which way it's kind of aiming with just slight variations, but, um, not, not something to worry too much about. I'm just, I'm just kind of talking about that. Um, but yes, yeah, so with his cloak, I threw him in shadow there. Um, I'm throwing in here details on, uh, on the, the buildings. Uh, this is like the wall of the canal. There's like little, uh, drains that run underneath that, that I throw in. Uh, they all have bars on them. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I did go with a shadow on, on the face of things. But not, of course, I didn't throw the face of sun on in shadow because uh, he's he's the focus here. Um, I need to get a finer eraser because sometimes I end up erasing uh, too much, a lot more than I needed to, just to like add something. Um, but I'm also getting more comfortable with like rough pencils that are um, layered and uh, making the page pretty dark. Uh, part of the challenge with that is like you need it to erase later. Um, a lot of it for me is if there's, if it's too dark and too many pencil lines on the page, I don't get that stark contrast when I lay my inks. I don't really get the feel for, uh, my lines and my blacks going on, uh, to white to like what, it, what the inks will really look like once you erase, it starts to get, get harder to see. Um, but I, uh, at the same time, if I keep erasing and, and refine the pencils or, uh, I keep them more careful and fine, then it changes the way I pencil and it takes longer. So there's, everyone's got to find that balance with, you know, what paper they use and what pencil and what hardness I use an H. So it's not very hard. It's softer than a standard pencil slightly and uh you know that's it's all it's all just personal uh feeling and stuff because um you know with the softer lead like you don't have to push as hard to get like a darker line um and i have you know i have a problem of pushing too hard if if the lead's too light um and that will damage the paper uh make it hard to erase um, it just doesn't feel nice and flow like when I hold a pin, uh, and, and the ink just flows out of the end of it, uh, that feels really nice. And I like my pencils to feel the same way. So if you use a darker lead, like a, or a softer lead, I mean the same thing, uh, it'll, it'll come out really smoothly. And, uh, and I like that feeling. So I try to find the right balance there where it's not too soft and, uh, making too, too many, uh, messes on the page and smudges and where it can still get those details. Another thing is to keep my pencil sharp. I have a bad habit of not sharpening often while I pencil the page. I just power through it. Like right there, I just held up my pencil. It's getting uh, soft, grabbed the sharpener, <laughs> sharpen it up. That's funny that I mentioned it right here because that's, that's exactly what I needed to do was sharpen it a bit. Um, Yeah. Okay. So here's the canoes and, uh, son notices that there are crocodiles in the canal for the first time and he's eating a crocodile. So it's like 
putting two and two together a bit. Um, and this is kind of the reveal of that. Um, those lines I threw in, that's the perspective. Um, so uh, the boats are not totally sideways, like they're kind of coming towards the camera there. Um, now, this, uh, this does have a left orientation. So typically, people move left to right and you usually uh, on the page and you usually want to keep it that way for, uh, you know, English speaking, uh, and many, you know, Western comics cause, uh, people read left to, to right. And they're very used to left to right orientation. Uh, it happens in films too. Um, uh, but here I swapped it and I've got it going, uh, right to left. Um, let, um, yeah, here I erased these characters because, uh, I put him in the wrong position on the boat. So I was telling you about that a minute ago. Um, but uh, sometimes you can like it's it can be jarring to change directions. Um, it's more important if the direction's important. But um, what I have here is. Uh, I want you to look at sun first and then look at the crocodile. So sun and the boat he's on is to the left and the crocodile is to the right. Uh, so it's still left to right and it's top to bottom. So the boat's uh, top and, and the crocodile's bottom. Uh, so that um, that movement is natural for the eye. So for the storytelling, it's the correct movement. Um, for uh, the direction they're moving, it's not correct. Um, but sometimes that can be used, like it can be jarring, but it can be used for comedic effect um, and like to make something stand out or whatever. And And this is a moment where like it's like, stop in your tracks kind of funny uh, moment for the kid. So um, it, it works and, and the direction they're going isn't so important at the moment. And I've got his reaction, just a nice big uh, headshot. Uh, Got to have those, those uh, character shots with the faces. Um, a lot of people use a lot more of those than I do. Um, a lot more like closer figure shots. Um, but I enjoy comics when I get a sense for where the characters are in their physical space. So I like to uh, use those more sparingly. Um, it might even be like a, a preference to like things over people and a, maybe a slight autism neurodivergency. Um, but I... I like to see uh, the environments and the space and how things are moving, what's happening. Um, and I would rather only show the faces when they're important, uh, like on purpose and not just default to that. And now we're inking. This is sped up quite a bit, but I, I do move pretty quickly as I go through that. Um, you'll see like my choices of what to do first. I kind of started top left. Uh, hitting those background elements. Um, and then I kind of skipped ahead and did that sh the line. So there's a shadow line uh, on, that I threw on. That was kind of a late thought in the pencils. But that, that line to throw black on like the bottom of this panel was, you know, to, to frame it, to, to frame where the characters are and just add some, some weight and interest there. Um, Technically, the light's kind of from that angle, and then it wouldn't be in shadow. But there's a lot of buildings and stuff, so you can do that. The water was, uh, you know, I just kind of riffed and made that up as I went. But um, water is challenging on how you want to ink that. Uh, for me, it's a lot easier with still water when there's um, a lot of reflection. Uh, when you're seeing things from... A more uh, flat perspective uh, or more side profile view um, you can get like like the reflections of things in the water that's getting easier for me and you get those layers of like ripples and things that that are horizontal and those are easier to draw but when you have like a, a kind of like up and down coming right at you like moving water uh, the the flow of that water is vertical like on the page. And for me, that's just like one, you know, situation that I find a little more challenging to capture 
Um, so I did it the way that felt right to me. I'm just kind of going by feeling. What does water feel like to me? And I, I really like it when people do that. When uh, when there's artists that like what they draw doesn't. It looks it looks odd. It might be funny, uh, quirky, but they're trying to capture what it feels like. Um, and and that is like if you get it, it's it, it, it's fun. It's like you get you get to experience the world through someone else's perspective and you don't get to do that if they just photo reference everything, uh, and, and, you know, get it accurate. You're not getting to experience it from their perspective in the same way. So, um, so I try not to be afraid to take chances and do things slightly wrong when it comes to shadow placement and, like the folds in the clothing uh, and on his cloak there and uh, and like the water and, and things like that. Um, th- there's some element of like winging it, going for it, going for what feels right to you, uh, really just expressing yourself and saying it. Yeah. All right, so um, Less contrast in the back. I've got like the heavier black areas, also less detail. So there needs to be less, less detail on the the stonework and stuff uh, when it's so far from the eye. And then as you get to the front, notice it's not just solid black. You actually see the stonework, like a highlight line on, on things uh, in the black. So there's like high contrast in that area. Uh, At the same time, it's not the focus. I don't want you to primarily look at that so there's there's repetition there's pattern uh there's there's kind of a simplicity to that so that it doesn't draw too much attention decided to throw some brickwork there and some black shadow on on that back building to create some uh, depth yep and here we go one thing that's kind of a challenge with this is uh, because the the two uh, oarsmen are they're on caddy corner corners of the boat and sword and son are are on the boat. Um, there's uh, a challenge to make sure that I use camera angles where you can see sword and son well that they're not just covered by by the uh, the oarsmen. So uh, that worked out. Um, there and it's you know it's obviously easier in a side view here yeah the buildings you know i'm kind of making that up based on my research and studies i did but i'm making it up on the page i'm going for like blocky old stone when it gets close to the canal and a few elements that look like even older like uh uh wore down broken down like uh defenses and things because you know it's a different that was from a different time but then there's also the there's a lot of people there's uh i'm just keep throwing in that repetitive um tent uh like covering canopies um just to to have that element um and uh and then the buildings that are like a lot of housing that are like newer buildings that are kind of stacked on di- and there's different levels. There's like not everything's at one level cause there's the canals. So there's like lower levels and then stairs and things. So, um, just kind of like playing with those different elements, those ideas that should be in the city, uh, and kind of making it up for that scene and, uh, fitting it in, in a way that it doesn't create tangents, uh, and, any problems with the composition and I'm cleaning it up and and we're done that's it this cleanup did not take nearly as long as last time Um, not a lot of cleanup needed here's a view of the panels and the finished page inks there And then here is the uh, fully colored and lettered final page. And I'll give you a close-up view of those, too. All right. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time, next Sunday, because we post the new page 
uh, and the video for the page on Sundays.